Hey, this is Miles with SellerAmp. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a full step-by-step -step beginner tutorial of how to use SellerAmp SAS for Amazon Arbitrage Product Research in 2023. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what it costs, what goes into using it, how the Chrome extension works, and everything like that. So let's get right into it. To start out, we're gonna take a look at the pricing for SellerAmp. So, Basically, the annual cost of SellerAmp for the getting started version, which the big differentiating factor in that is, is it allows you less than 1,000 or up to 1,000 lookups per month, basically. Getting serious lets you get unlimited lookups per month as well as some other benefits as, uh, as you can see here. It's discounted annually, basically, so um, the annualized price of getting started comes out to about $16, um, US 16.6 US per month as well as 23 um, for getting serious on that and then the monthly cost is a little bit less or a little bit more so you save it on it on an annual basis basis right there so pretty affordable on, uh, on that that's our goal at seller to help you make as much money as possible um, without giving us an arm and a leg basically on that so next now that you have a seller amp subscription it's going to be important to go ahead and configure your settings to have that correct specifically to you so to do that, you're gonna to go to selleramp.com, you're gonna go up in the top right, click the drop down menu, and hit settings right there. That's gonna bring you to this page right here. It's important um, to actually go ahead and configure your settings, um, your buying criteria. This isn't super important um, right here. I'm pretty sure I just have the, the manual version in here. I have my minimum ROI is 30%. That's what personally I like to um, not really dip below in terms of when I'm sourcing as well as $3 in profit and then a maximum BSR percent of 1%, minimum obviously being zero right there. The real important thing to making sure your numbers are actually correct for your specific situation is actually going ahead in and adding in a prep center fee. If you have one, a MISC fee, if uh, maybe you like you pay an employee on a per unit basis, similar to the prep center right there, or a MISC fee that's actually a percentage basis, not a per unit flat cost, right there which would typically be like sales tax and uh, stuff like that basically so that's gonna vary on you based on where you actually go ahead and ship to for example i live in pennsylvania pennsylvania has sales tax and some stuff it doesn't um, in other categories and i largely ship through new hampshire which is actually a sales tax free state which when i use my prep center basically that makes my prep fee a dollar and 25 cents right there and then my misc fee actually is zero um, in there because there's not a percentage cost attached to that that's a big benefit of using a prep center sales tax free state is you get to avoid um, the sales tax and typically you actually end up saving money and not having to do the work, pay for the supplies, um, stuff like that. So big fan of that as well. I recommend also having an inbound shipping cost um, in here, which is about 30 cents per pound in terms of what I like to do. That overstates it a little bit based on um, what it typically is in my uh, own business right there. I don't really worry about the default values right here, uh, miscellaneous, anything like that. I would recommend in the quick quick info down here in the bottom left, having everything selected, um, that's actually gonna decide whether you wanna see up here in the Chrome extension profit, profit uh, margin, ROI, break even, um, stuff like that, which personally I like to have in all the products I'm actually going ahead and looking at right there. In terms of hopping over and actually taking a look at the Chrome extension, I'm gonna give you guys a full walkthrough of how that actually works, basically. So, um, some of you guys don't know that you can actually move it around. There was actually a big debate on Twitter the other day about where it's supposed to go. You can have it whenever you want, or wherever you want, right there. So, I like personally having it in the top right. Up here, in terms of different um, controls up here, we can see the product title as well as their review count. Up here, as well as the ASIN, which is the Amazon Standard Identification Number, right here. If you were going to go to list this product, you would just copy it um, from SellerAmp right here, as well as a UPC code on that. This is very important right here, taking a look at the dimensions on uh, this, especially if you're looking at FBM products. It's really important to know the weight specifically of that, as well as the dimensions, in order to know the uh, like what type of packaging and estimating that shipping on the seller and prof calculator for FBM, which I'll show you guys how to do in a little bit. Right there. Um, right here just has the product description um, right there. You can open up the Amazon product page, which you're already at um, right here. If you were to go ahead and look for this product right here, you would just go ahead and click one click Google right there. It would bring you to that, as well as if you want to open up the SAS web app right here, which basically aggregates all the stuff we're about to talk about together right here. So especially if you're looking into wholesale or just see the data a lot more clear right here, welcome to click the uh, SAS web app and take a look at that 
right there. Okay, next, quick info right here. So, in terms of eligibility, um, that's whether or not you're ungated on that, you need to sign into Sour Central to see that for specific, specific product. Luckily, if you're watching this video and aren't sure how to get ungated, it's very easy these days. There's a lot of videos on YouTube you can go check out um, in terms of that. The alerts panel right here, this is very important. This shows us um, whether Amazon's um, been on the buy box, whether it's private label, which is typically based on the amount of competitive sellers um, right there. If there's any IP complaints, um, known issues, suspected issues like that, the size of it, um, FBA fulfillment fee, whether it's a multiple product and whether or not there's variations right there. So that's some data you need to know for every product and SellerAmp tells you it really quick. That's really the goal of SellerAmp is to tell you how fast an item sells, whether you can sell it, and then actually breaking down the profitability, which is done via the profit calculator right here. Now it's important to know what BSR means as well right here. So BSR is actually how quick a product sells right here. So in terms of like actually getting consistent sales, typically you wanna stay under around 100,000 sales rank, for the most part, I chose this product because it was above that, and we can see it's in the two per, two, uh, the second percentile, basically, 2% of that category, so that puts it above where we wanna be from a velocity perspective. So I'd probably go ahead and avoid this um, right here, but it came up as red, and if we'll look at a product that comes up as green, it would uh, hit that velocity criteria, basically, in terms of the BSR section. Estimated sales is basically the estimated sales um, for that item per month as well as the max cost right here is where we would need to be below to hit our target profitability right here. So if we put in the profit calculator right here, 47.41, that would put us right at a 30% ROI after shipping to Amazon, product cost, Amazon fees, everything like that basically, which would leave us $14 profit on this item. And then if we go like 45, for example, that juices the ROI a little bit more but if we only were paying 50, that would put the ROI below our target. Um, right there, the offer summary down here is pretty cool. It actually goes ahead and tells you how many sellers there are on a listing, um, rank and prices right here. You can actually go ahead and see the BSR percentile, which we just talked about um, right there, the buy box price, um, the lowest FBA sellers at the current uh, time, lowest FBM seller price right there. The Keepa BSR drops, not a huge fan of that as a velocity metric um, on that, as well as the net buy box price changes, kind of just shows you the different activity on there, estimated sales and the time to sale right there, which we can actually just go ahead and refresh if we wanted to. And then we can also see the average over that amount of time, which is pretty cool. Um, we can see like the 180 day averages and such. Now, if you're a beginner, you're probably not gonna be purchasing super high quantities of different products, right? So I would recommend mainly focusing on the 90-day data in terms of making buying decisions um, right there. Scrolling down to the alerts right here, you wanna be logged into Sour Central so you can check um, your ungates basically right there. You'll notice the alerts actually uh, matches um, the stuff right up here, so like you kinda of get that data twice basically. If you did wanna scroll down and see it kind of more laid out there, it's there available for you on SellerAmp, right? And then the next thing we actually want to go ahead and take a look at right here is the Keepa chart. So this is very, very important in terms of gauging the performance on a product over time. We can see how this product has performed over time. And you can see looking at the different um, kind of the guide up here, right? So mainly looking at the sales rank, which is the green line and how that's performed over time. You can also see the averages there above, as well as the buy box price, which is the pink line on the first chart are the two main important ones that I'm personally looking at. So sales rank, how often it sells over time, and then buy box price, what price has it sold for over time. Those are really important stuff you need to know. The third metric that's really important is actually taking a look at the offer count, which is this bottom chart to see how long, how much that has moved over time, right? So we can see the current offer count is about 38 sellers right here. But if we go back to March 30th, about a month ago, we can see the offer count was only 10, and if that makes sense, the price would be significantly higher there, right? It's, it was 94 back then, it's all the way down to 84 now, so it's dropped significantly. We can also see the performance over time. You can see there's been cyclical um, supply as well as price action right there. They're pretty inversely related. The less supply there is, the higher the product sells for, so on and so forth. Um, right here. So the prop calculator right here, this is expanded on top of uh, what we saw up there. If this product was small and light eligible, which was a big feature request we had last year, 
go ahead and toggle that on as well. Um, right here you can mess with the, uh, the fees based on storage months as well. Um, it's just going to be standard FBA fulfillment type, but you could go ahead here and do FBM um, right there if you wanted to as well. Um, what's important here is being able to easily access the weight right there to estimate the FBM shipping cost um, right there, which in this case, something that's about 14 ounces right here is going to ship for between like six and six dollars fifty cents on average, depending on where it's going. Right, so say we are able to buy this for 50 bucks and sell it for 84 right here on Amazon. That will leave us $10 profit and an ROI of only about 20% right there, um, which is not what I'm looking to do basically. And then we can see the profit margin, break even sale price, as well as the estimated Amazon payout right here. Very underrated feature right here is the quantity tab. So say you were to do 20 units of this, it'll pop up the total profit you would make so on and so forth. Variations feature is in beta currently as well as so there's no um, variations on this listing. Another underrated feature right here is actually the Google Seeds feature. So we're obviously spending all this time finding products. You wanna make sure you're capturing as much value for that time as possible. And some of that comes down to staying organized right here. So say you found this item and it was like close to being good or it was good and you were gonna buy it or your virtual assistant found it for you, right? Uh, it's really important to stay organized with this and what you can actually do is just go ahead and one click this and then it goes and immediately exports the Google Sheets that you set up in the selleramp.com settings right there. So we can see that immediately exported right there and zapped it over to our spreadsheet right here with some different data and information on this product. So this is a great feature in terms of you staying organized on your own sourcing if you want to share leads with friends, etc., or have virtual assistants that are sourcing for you right there. Uh, my buddy Warner, who's another one of our team members at Selleramp, has like a million different spreadsheets basically for all his virtual assistants and such. So it's really important to stay organized right there. I like the idea of having like an out of stock sheet, a uh, almost good sheet, Q4 products, stuff like that, um, basically. And we definitely do that with my own virtual assistants on different seller amp account. Um, we have the out of stock sheet, so on and so forth, um, right there. The discounts tab right here is pretty self explanatory. If you wanted to factor in any discounts um, on that, you could go ahead and add that in. It would automatically um, change the numbers there and so forth. So, like, say we got a 20% discount, it would add 30% to our ROI based on the way the numbers and fees break down and everything like that. So, you can also see the history of when I've looked at this product as well. So if you want to go ahead and zap this over and add Seller Central right there. So last couple things in terms of taking a look at this. So we can go ahead here and see the competition right here and see their price action as well as what our numbers would be at that specific price, right? As well as their stock counts right here over time. Now, sometimes sellers will have what's called order limits on here, but it's good enough just having this data. And typically it's not too much of an issue if your competitors have heavy stock. Oftentimes you won't even be able to see because they'll have max order limits anyway in the first place, but uh, you'll be able to see in the price action whether or not that's been an issue, which typically it isn't. Amazon rotates the buy box nicely. Um, right there. What's important from this page is that you can actually go ahead and see the review counts on different sellers on here and then be able to go ahead and actually open up their storefronts and find more profitable products from this using what's called the reverse sourcing method where we actually go ahead and take a look at specific sellers and go ahead and see what they're carrying and be able to see if they're FBA, FBM, the different brands they carry, the different uh, categories they carry so on and so forth in the storefront stocking view right here where we can see their review count as well as their ASIN count right here, all the different brands they carry, all the different categories they carry, and then we can go in and filter to specific ones in here to see and easily qualify products down in here in terms of we can see their BSR, their max cost, their offer count, as well as a glimpse into the keep chart right here. So let's say you wanted to look at like this brand, for example, and you saw like the price is decreasing on a lot of these and maybe the velocity wasn't as good as you want to, maybe those aren't products you're gonna go ahead and take a look at right here. But if we just click into the total beauty and personal care category, we can see the uh, lowest FBA price skyrocketed on this item right here. So probably is gonna be something you want to head go ahead and take a look at. So like when I'm personally doing product research, I'll just go ahead and open up basically a bunch of different sellers right here and then kind of go and dig through their catalog in terms of trying to find profitable opportunities and brands and categories I'd like to carry to then go ahead and take a look at and go ahead and, you know, 2K BSR here, something I'm gonna wanna take a look at, right? 9K BSR here, 116 BSR, a little bit high, might take a look, back to school is coming up 
um, right there. But 9K BSR, definitely it's something I'm going to want to take a look in right here. Then I go through the variations, try to find the most attractive variations and go ahead and Google that product using SellerAmp right there and then go and find profitable products. Profitable opportunities right there. So I personally um, have averaged 20 grand a month profit the past 18 months or so um, with Amazon All-In Arbitrage. I do a ton of reverse sourcing. I use SellerAmp for all that reverse sourcing as we're taking a look at this stuff basically. So cannot recommend um, reverse sourcing the storefront stocking feature uh, more. It's one of the features I mainly use in uh, my own business as well as the uh, profit calculator, Google Sheets, other stuff like that. Right there, we do have the web app, which I briefly showed you guys, which basically aggregates all that data together, as well as we do have a mobile app for if you're doing retail arbitrage, which is included um, with all subscriptions basically right there. So if you have any questions about how to actually go ahead and use SellerAmp, anything like that, let us know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. You get a completely free trial at selleramp.com, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.